Hey guys, Michael Sanchez, violin teacher here, and owner of violinshack.com. So I wanted to go through some really good points on five things that you never knew about buying a bow. So first of all, so many people out there just don't realize how important a bow is to a violin player's sound. So basically, even though a bow looks very similar from one to the next, they bring so much more out of your instrument and it's really a utopia once you actually do it for the first time. I've never seen a student not be blown away when they first grab a bow that they've never had when they've been used to a really cheap bow, and they just see how much more of the sound comes out of the violin. It's hard to demonstrate in here really in a, in a video, but I'm telling you, as a teacher, it's been around, been playing for a long time, I've seen all my students experience this. So a bow, makes a huge difference. Also, the big thing with a quality, you know, an upgraded bow is that it's gonna aid in you being able to articulate a lot easier and get a cleaner sound, which is really important, especially as you start to progress and advance in the violin. So things like spiccato, things like crossing strings, things that are typically more challenging with a stiffer bow will be easier with a more flexible and higher quality bow. So definitely, you know, consider Trying out a bow if you haven't before because it does make a huge difference. Number two is bow weight matters. So bows, as far as weight, they typically range from 57 grams up into about 64 grams. Um, both of those are very extreme and you really don't want to deal with the extremes. But um, I've seen bows sort of in that range. Once you go above that, then you're looking at viola weight. And yeah, I was going to say below something, but no, it's... Um, a three-quarter size violin bow. Um, so basically the most ideal weight and most common would be between 60 grams to about 62, or I would say 61.5. So don't take that as gospel as, you know, some players prefer a heavier bow because they are really light players. And, you know, having um, a heavier bow kind of helps them dig in a little bit more. And a lot of that does have to do with weight distribution, which I'll talk about here in a second. But, you know, players typically that are weak, weaker players don't play as aggressively, can appreciate a heavier bow. They might be looking at like a 61, 62 gram bow. Just because you are that, don't say that you need a 64 gram. That's the extreme again, by the way. Um, and then on the other hand, if you're more of a aggressive player, you can appreciate more of the lighter stick. So even like 59 grams, you know, um, 58 grams is really light, but that, that could be the case. Um, but yeah, you really can't go wrong kind of stick sticking between like 60 and 61.5. Next, material matters. So there's four different types of bow material. You have um, Brazil wood, which is the most common, I would say, in most like rental outfits, violin packages that you find online, and, you know, um, rental outfits. Um, fiberglass bows are also very common. Both of those type of bows are cheap. Um, they'll typically be priced, you know, between like 10 and 30 bucks. Um, they're just standard bows that kind of just help you when you're first starting, but they don't really do anything helpful regarding articulation and progressing. Um, once you start to progress, you're going to really appreciate getting into one of two materials, carbon fiber or, and or Pernambuco. Carbon fiber is a material that's similar look to fiberglass, but it's much higher quality. Yes, you probably know like what carbon fiber is on different types of other products. Um, but it's a really good bow for fiddle playing, for outdoor playing. It's very durable. It won't break. It's nice for parents that don't want their kids to break the bow. But it's, for me, I recommend Pernambuco because I think it's a better value for how it produces the sound. So I highly recommend Pernambuco bows. Um, they start at about 150 to 200 and the sky's the limit um, for Pernambuco. So if you can get into a, a Pernambuco bow as a beginner, and then definitely as you start to progress, if you've been playing three years and you're still in a Brazil wood fiberglass bow, you need to upgrade. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Um, if you're starting to articulate in, in any way, shape, or form, you're going to be able to tell a difference. So, you know, typically players have been playing, say, five to ten years are looking in the four to eight range, four, four to eight hundred range for a Pernambuco bow. Um, players have been playing ten to twenty years are looking in the eight hundred to fifteen hundred range. Um, if you're a professional, you're easily willing to pay 1500 bucks for a bow up to about three grand. Um, and then if you're even more professional, like you're a concert master or somebody, um, 
that has money, that's, you know, avid player and makes money at violin, they, they could easily spend five grand, 10 grand. Um, I, I have a friend that's really good. He paid 25 grand for his bow. Um, I've played personally on a Picat, which is a $50,000 bow. I'm scaring you now. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, bows are, are a, it's, it's a, the breath. The breath of the violinist is the right hand and the bow is the extension of the breath. So it's a really important thing to have the best bow that fits you best. Uh, number four is bow weight distribution matters. So some bows are going to have more weight at the frog. Some bows are going to have more weight at the tip. Some are going to be even distributed. There's no right answer to what's best for you. Um, some people prefer a heavier at the frog bow, maybe because they're um, they're a little bit more flexible. Some people prefer more weight at the tip because they're less flexible. They're more stiff in the wrist, so it's nice to have a little bit more weight up here. Um, but ultimately, it's really about just grabbing the bow, testing three or four out, and seeing, yeah, this feels good, this sounds good. I, I, it, I find it easy to play and use. And that brings me to number five, which is testing bow is the way to go. So you don't just want to buy a bow and just assume it's going to be good. Even if it's a really expensive bow, it's not necessarily going to fit your style of playing. So my recommendation is to try out maybe two or three bows. And anytime somebody tries out a violin for me, I always recommend throwing in a couple bows they can also kind of test out the bows and the violin combination, see what fits the best because some bows sound better with certain types of violin and certain types of players. So ultimately you kind of want a price range. You kind of want the material to be solid and then two or three testing out is, is the way to go. I do bow trials. I have some really good quality German bows from, from a, a shop in Florida. Um, I don't buy anything else from them of bows. They have awesome bows. I send them out on trial all the time, and they do really well through the process. Um, as far as people doing the 30-day trial before, they're not sure if they're going to like it, but then they end up loving them. And I also play on one. I play on the Gold Series of the, the Hermann Lugers. So, yeah, I highly recommend you trying out a Hermann Luger um, German bow from me or a few um, and or a violin. I would be more than happy to work with you. You can actually schedule a time to meet with me and schedule an appointment. Uh, I can answer all your questions and we can book a uh, trial for a bow. I, I normally do a 10% deposit, uh, which is refundable upon return of the bow. And you can also apply that 10% towards the purchase of the bow. So um, I've sold a lot, of a lot of bows over the years and the shop I work with are solid. I don't deal with anybody else because they're really good. So yeah, let me know if you're interested and um, look forward to working with you. Have a great day.